All right, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to prove Kramer's rule for the 2x2 two two system. Now, whenever we were talking about Kramer's rule in the lesson, you might have been scratching your head going, well, this is kind of cool and all, but why does this even work? So we're going to see why this works uh, right here in this uh, video. So remember for Kramer's rule, what you have to first do is you have to find the determinant of the coefficient matrix. Okay, and that can't be zero. If it was zero, you wouldn't have a unique solution. Okay, let's just focus on the x coordinate right here. This is the one that I'm actually going to prove. Um, to find the value of the x coordinate, I take the values of the x coefficients out and replace it with a constant e and f. Okay, and then to find that determinant, divide it by whatever the determinant of the coefficient matrix is. So the way this proof is going to go is. I am going to prove it another way. I'm going to find the value of x through elimination, and then I'm going to match it up to what I would get if I solved it using uh, Kramer's rule, and see if they match. If they match, I've just proven it. Okay. So using elimination, we're going to solve this for x, which means I need to eliminate y's. So to eliminate the y's, I need, I, first of all, I can't use specific numbers. I have to use the variables that are in these equations. So I need these coefficients to match just be opposite numbers. So what I would do is I'm going to multiply the top equation by d and multiply the bottom equation by b. Actually negative b so that they're exact opposites and they cancel out. So whenever I multiply by d across the top, I'm going to have a d x plus b d y is equal to d e. Okay, now for the second equation, I would have a negative bcx minus bdy equals a negative bf. Okay, so far? Now, uh, whenever I go to add these two equations together, of course what happens is that my y's eliminate. They cancel out. Okay, now I need to add up my x's. So if this was the number, say, 5, and this one was 2, 5 minus 2, 3 would be the coefficient. I would subtract those out. Since these are variables, I have to just write that out. In parentheses, I have AD minus BC times X. Does that make sense? I take the first coefficient minus the second one, whatever that number is, that's the coefficient of X, is equal to DE minus BF. Okay, one more thing to do. In order to find x, I need to divide by whatever this number is out in front, this coefficient, which is ad minus bc. Divide that on both sides. Now, I can only do that, of course, if that number is not 0. Because if it was 0, I couldn't divide by it. I'd be in trouble. OK. So this means that the value of x is de minus bf divided by ad minus bc. OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to match that up to what you're supposed to get if you use Kramer's rule. So I would find x is equal to the determinant of, take the x's out, the a and the c, and put e and f in its place. And then I have b, d, divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix, which is a, b, c, d. Now let's just simplify this. Up top I have d, e, minus bf. On the bottom I have ad minus bc. Take a look at that. That is exactly what we just found. So we've just proven it for x. Um, now of course keep in mind that when Kramer was doing this he was doing this without matrices so this is exactly what or how his rule was probably formulated. All right. So there you go, just proved it for x. I'll leave it t up to you as an enrichment activity to prove it for y. So you do roughly the same thing, you just eliminate the x's and uh, do the same kind of thing to find the value of y.